Hello everyone, welcome to the first video lecture of module 1 Calculus of Complex Functions and Construction of Analytic Functions of the subject Complex Analysis, Probability and Statistical Methods with the subject code 18141. So, we will begin this lecture with a review of complex number system and then we will proceed to study about the complex functions. So, what is a complex number? Now, let me begin with the definition of a complex number. If x and y are two real numbers, then any number of the form z is equal to x plus i y, where i is equal to root of minus 1 is called a complex number. So, x is called the real part of z and y is called the imaginary part of z. So, if z equals to x plus i y is a complex number, then the complex number z bar is equal to x minus i y. This is called the complex conjugate of complex number z. Next, we will find the complex representation of sine and cosine functions. So, from Euler's formula, we have e power i z equal to cos z plus i sin z. Replacing i by minus i on both sides, we get e power minus i z equal to cos z minus i sin z. Now, from these two equations, we will be able to get uh, solve for cosine of z and sine of z. Now, we can add these two equations. We get e power i z plus e power minus i z equals to cos z plus cos z and these two will cancel. So, we will get 2 cos z equal to e power i z plus e power minus i z. So, that cos z is e power i z plus e power minus i z divided by 2. Similarly, uh, subtract the uh, second equation from the first equation. Uh, we will get the expression for sin z. That is e power i z minus e power minus i z is uh, cos z minus cos z 0. i sin z minus minus sin z, i sin z that is 2 i sin z or sin z is e power i z minus e power minus i z divided by 2 y. Now these two forms will, uh, these are the complex representations of cosine and sine functions. Now these two will, uh, these two forms will look familiar to you right. So because these are uh, very similar to the definition of cosine and sine hyperbolic functions. So, what is hyperbolic cosine function? It is cos hz equal to e power z plus e power minus z by 2. Similarly, sine hyperbolic z is e power z minus e power minus z by 2. Next, we are going to relate these regular functions with these hyperbolic functions. So, if you look at this definition, here we have e power z, right, e power z plus e power minus z by 2 and here we have e power i z plus e power minus i z by 2. So, in this, okay, so we are going to replace uh, z by i z. So, cos i z from this relation, cos i z is e power i times i z plus my e power minus i times i z by 2. So, what it gives? So, we are going to get cos i z equal to e power, see here, i into i z i times i z or i times i is i square i square is minus 1 so it becomes e power minus z and here we have e power minus into minus that is plus z e power z by 2 and this is nothing but cos h z so we have cos i z is equal to cos hyperbolic z similarly sin z is e power i z minus e power minus i z by 2 y from this we are uh, going to get sin i z equal to e power i times i z minus e power minus i times i z by 2 i that is e power minus z minus e power z divided by 2 i. So, we can rewrite this as so e power z minus e power minus z divided by minus 2 into 1 by i. Okay, now what is 1 by i? 1 by i is equal to i by i square 
multiply and divide by i. So 1 by i is i by i square. i square is nothing but minus 1. So i by minus 1 or minus i. So we have 1 by i is minus i. Replacing 1 by i by minus i we get uh, this is equal to i times e power z minus e power minus z by 2 that is nothing but i times sin hyperbolic z. So we are getting sin i z equal to i sin hyperbolic z. Next we will see how can we represent a complex number z is equal to x plus i y on a complex plane. A complex number z is equal to x plus i y is represented by a point x comma y in the uh, Cartesian coordinate plane that is x y plane. The x axis is called real axis and uh, the y axis is called the imaginary axis. The xy plane on which the complex numbers are marked as uh, points is called a complex plane. Suppose this OP is equal to R and theta is the angle made by OP with the positive real axis. So we have from this right angle triangle we have cos theta is adjacent side by hypotenuse that is cos theta is x by r and sin theta is opposite side by hypotenuse that is sin theta is y by r or we can write x equal to r cos theta y is equal to r sin theta substituting this in this uh, complex uh, uh, form z equal to x plus i y we get z is equal to r cos theta plus i times r sin theta or z is equal to r into cos theta plus i sin theta. And we have from Euler's formula this cos theta plus i sin theta is nothing but e power i theta. So z is equal to r e power i theta. Thus every complex number z equal to x plus i y can be expressed in the form z equal to r e power i theta and this is called the polar form of z. Now here if you take these two equations if, it's, if I square and add it that is x square plus y square will be r square cos square theta plus r square sin square theta or r square into cos square theta plus sin square theta that is r square. So we will get x square plus y square equal to r square or r equal to root of x square plus y square. So here this uh, r is called the modulus of z and it is denoted by this notation modulus of z. So r is equal to mod z equal to root of x square plus y square. This is the modulus of z and it represents the length of the distance of the point from the uh, origin. Distance of the point here z point z from the origin. And uh, if I divide these two relations here one by the other, so y by x, what is y by x? So it is r sin theta by r cos theta or tan theta. We have y by x equal to tan theta or theta is equal to tan inverse y by x. So this theta is called, the angle theta is called the argument of z or amplitude of z. Next, we will proceed to study about the complex functions of a complex variable. So, the definition is, if for each value of the complex variable z in a given region r, that corresponds a unique complex number w according to some rule, then w is called a complex function of z defined in r. We write w equal to f of z equal to u plus i v. So here we have z is uh, if z is x plus i y then x is the real part of z and y is the imaginary part of z. w will also be a complex number so it has real part say u and uh, let uh, v be the imaginary part of w complex number w. So we have w is equal to u plus i v. So this is the representation of w. So, if z is specified in the complex form 
that is Cartesian form x plus i y that is uh, then w is equal to f of z equal to u of x y plus i v of x y this u and d v will be functions of variables x and y and if z is specified in the polar form z equal to r e power i theta then this u and v are functions of r and theta so we can write w equal to f of z equal to u of r theta plus i v of r theta suppose that we have uh, this complex function w equal to f of z equal to z square we can substitute z equal to x plus i y and w equal to u plus i v so we get in the Cartesian form if I take that is z equal to x plus i y so the equation becomes this uh, function takes the form u plus i v equal to x plus i y the whole square now expanding we get u plus i v equal to x square plus 2 i x y plus i square y square now i square is nothing but minus 1 so this becomes u plus i v equal to x square minus y square plus 2 uh, plus i times 2 x uh, 2 x y okay so that we can write u equal to x square minus y square and v equal to the image equating the real and imaginary part so so coefficient of v i is here v and here the coefficient of i is 2xy so we get v equal to equating v equal to 2xy so we have u and v here functions of x and y given z equal to x plus i y by taking z equal to x plus i y we get u and v functions of x and y if we take the polar form of z here in this function uh, f of z equal to z square if i take z equal to r e power i theta then the function takes the form so w is complex number u plus i v the right side will be r e power i theta whole square or we can write u plus i v equal to expanding r square e power 2 i theta then we have e power 2 i theta by Euler's formula we have cos 2 theta plus i sin 2 theta so this becomes r square into cos 2 theta plus i sin 2 theta okay and next equate the real part on both sides we have u equal to right hand side real part is r square into cos 2 theta imaginary part on the left hand side is v right hand side imaginary part is r square into sin 2 theta so we have if z is uh, r e power i theta okay if i take z equal to r e power i theta we get w as u of r theta plus i v of r theta u and function u and v will be functions of r and theta now let's consider two points z1 and z2 in the complex plane so let z1 is x1 plus i y1 and z2 is x2 plus i y2 so that the difference between these two complex numbers is z1 minus z2 and by definition we have the difference between two complex numbers is the difference between real parts plus i times the difference between the imaginary parts so z1 minus z2 is x1 minus x2 plus i times y1 minus y2 now uh, we have the if z is x plus i y then modulus of z definition is modulus of z is root of x square plus y square that is root of real part square plus imaginary part square so what is the modulus of z1 minus z2 what is the modulus of this complex number it is root of real part square plus imaginary part square that is mod z1 minus z2 is root of x1 minus x2 to the square plus y1 minus y to the square so we have that one is x1 plus i y i y1 or we can write it as a ordered pair x1 y1 similarly z2 can be written as x2 y2 so we have uh, if there are two points x1 y1 x2 y2 and we know that by distance formula the distance between these two points is uh, root of x1 minus x2 whole square plus y1 minus y2 whole square which is nothing but modulus of z1 minus z2 so this gives so this modulus of z1 minus z2 represents the distance between 
between the points Z1 and Z2 in the complex plane. Okay, so their distance between these two points x1, y1, x2, y2 that means distance between z1 and z2. This is uh, given by modulus of z1 minus z2. Okay, just consider this. Um, suppose we have z0 given complex number and delta a positive real number uh, form the circle with the Z0 as center and delta as the radius. Then we have, uh, if we consider all the points Z on the circle, we have the distance between Z and Z0 is equal to delta. Or we can, uh, using this concept, we can write modulus of Z minus Z0 equal to delta for any Z on this circle. So the equation mod Z minus Z0 equal to delta represents a circle with center Z0 and radius delta in the complex form. Okay, so we have the definition neighborhood of a complex number. So let Z0 be any given complex number and delta be any positive real number. Then delta neighborhood of Z0 is the set of all points such that modulus of Z minus Z0 less than delta. Geometrically, this means that this modulus of Z minus Z0 less than delta means uh, it is the set of all points inside the circle having Z0 as the center and delta as the radius. Next, we will discuss about the limit of a complex function. You have already studied that basic properties of real functions such as continuity, differentiability are defined in terms of limits. In the similar way, we can define these for complex functions. Now, limit of a function f of z as z tends to z0 is equal to l means for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a real number delta greater than 0 or there exists a positive real delta such that modulus of f of z minus l is less than epsilon for every mod, uh, z such that modulus of z minus z0 is less than delta. So look at this graphically and see what it means. Consider a point z0 in the z plane. Consider some neighborhood of z0. Okay. So what is neighborhood? Neighborhood of z0 means it is a a set of, it's a set of all the points inside a circle with center Z0 and here we have uh, radius is delta. So delta neighborhood of Z0 here is set of all points inside the circle with center Z0 and radius uh, delta. Now let f of Z be the mapping of Z. Take any point Z inside the uh, inside this neighborhood of Z0 that is uh, uh, Z then take uh, f of Z be the the corresponding image in the W plane okay so we have f of Z W equal to f of Z now for every epsilon greater than 0 in that W plane there exists okay so for every epsilon greater than 0, we can find delta greater than 0 in that z plane such that this condition holds good. That is whenever the modulus of f of z minus l, whenever the distance between these two points f of z and l is less than epsilon, okay, then uh, there exists a z in the neighborhood of z0 such that distance between, between z and z0 is less than delta. When the function satisfies w equal to f of z, function satisfies this criteria, we say that the l is the limit of the function w equal to f of z. So this is known as delta or epsilon delta definition of limit. Now if the functional value f of z naught exists and this limit f of z as z tends to z0 is equal to 
f of z0 then we say that the function is continuous at the z0. So here we have the definition of continuity of f of z. A complex function w equals to f of z is said to be continuous at z0 if limit as z tends to z0 f of z is equal to f of z0. Okay, so next we have the definition of derivative of f of z. A complex function w equals to f of z is said to be differentiable at a point z0 if uh, this limit exists. Limit as z tends to z0 f of z minus f of z0 divided by z minus z0 exists. Then the limit is called the derivative of f of z at the point z0 and it is denoted by f dash of z0. So we have f dash of z0 equal to limit as z tends to z0 f of z minus f of z0 divided by z minus z0. Now if we take z minus z0 equal to delta z then as z tends to z0 we have delta z tends to 0. So if we substitute here in the expression for f dash of z0 this takes the form f dash of z0 equal to limit z tends to uh, z0 becomes delta z tends to 0 and we have z equal to from this delta z or uh, z0 plus delta z z is z0 plus f, uh, delta z so f of z will be f of z0 plus delta z minus f of z0 divided by delta z so we have this is the definition of derivative of complex valid function f of z with this I would like to end this lecture. Thank you.